listen to me. If there was a wise man who would ever think of this, they would say in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. For I am the man himself. What is going on, guys? And how y'all doing tonight? This is the Club of the Man 1993, and unfortunately, I am not live. I am recording again. It was just one of those weeks. I, well, not a bad week. It just... I probably mentioned a few times, but my wife and I are looking to put up a fence. And this week, we were basically coming home from work and, like, discussing what we're going to do about, like, you know certain paperwork we had to do and other things we had to take into consideration we didn't think we had to at first so it was a lot of like back and forth and then when we were done I just wanted to sit down and just watch my, my television shows so I didn't really get to do anything this week at all heck I'll be even honest I didn't even touch my week weekly list until tonight before I started recording this video to see what all I would like to do before the other. And of course, the two big things that I got to get caught up on, of course, is my Raw review and my SmackDown review. I'll try to record both of them tonight. I probably could have gone live at the same time and talked about both of them, if I'm being honest. Because I have considered doing that before. And just, you know, taking um, the Raw portion and the SmackDown portion, making their own separate videos later... But I have nothing prepared. No thumbnails currently. Before, well, there will be once you see this video. So I'm just going to record. Just to try to get stuff caught up. Because my three big things. And also I mentioned in a, in a YouTube post. I, I mentioned that unless. Because we have surpassed the goal. The latest goal of 2,000 subscribers. Again, I want to like take. Like kind of like ease back a bit on like pushing the goal. And just relax for a little bit. But we will, of course, have other goals eventually for the channel as far as subscribers go. But unless if it's like something big is happening the coming week, I am going to take a break of the agenda shorts that I was doing for a while. Because also, like, most, some of them were starting to get a little bit repetitive. So I thought there's really no point in, like, repeating myself again. But, like, WrestleMania week, I'll probably do one. And, like, other times as well, like, pay-per-view weeks, I'll probably do one. If something, like, different is coming to the channel. Or if, like, a new Let's Play or something is starting, I'll probably do it there. Until then, though, again, it's just gonna just... We're gonna just ease back a little bit on, like, the promoting and whatnot. Not saying that, you know, it's... I don't want to stop, you know, getting eyes on the channel. I don't. I still want to keep going. But... I was going hard for the longest time, making sure my channel was seen, and I still wanted to be seen, but I just want to, like, still do the channel, but just sit back and breathe for a few minutes. But, that's kind of like a little bit of a, an update there, but um, we're going to roll into this Raw review and talk about this week's episode of Raw. The March 18, 2024 edition of Raw took place in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are we have two more episodes of Raw left, of course, which I will most likely just be reviewing next week's episode and then just taking the week of WrestleMania off from Raw and SmackDown reviews and just doing the preview for WrestleMania. And then, of course, you know, we'll do the Raw and SmackDowns after WrestleMania as well and, of course, go from there. Hopefully, the Raw of WrestleMania this year will not piss me off. But, um... This episode of Raw I thought was good. Actually, I really enjoyed it. We um we had probably, in my opinion, 
Cody Rhodes best promo since coming back to WWE. Like it was a pure fire promo that just took Cody to a whole nother level. I thought we had some more tag matches. Well, we had qualify. Now it wasn't qualify matches. I guess maybe because Raw doesn't either Raw had more spots for the six man ladder match that instead of doing like a brackets like SmackDown's doing since they only have two spots, they're do they did just three tag matches and those winners claimed their spots. Which there is one team that bothers me that they're in. And I'll talk about that. Uh, we had a contract signing for the Intercontinental Championship. I'm gonna Still kind of go down the road and thinking, I unfortunately don't think Sami Zayn's going to win the IC title at uh, WrestleMania. And of course, I will explain why. And why I think it is okay that they're not going with Chad Gable here. But they could down the line. Um, we had an excellent main event. Last woman standing with Becky Lynch and Nia Jax. Yes, again, I can't believe I'm praising a Nia Jax match. Um, and of course, the first of those three tag matches, oh man, that first one was fire! But we'll talk about that, of course, in a second. Oh yeah, and we also, which we, this is how we're going to segue in, opened up with a promo with Jimmy and Jay Uso. So, Jay Uso comes out, and, um... He says, this feels different, and regardless of the bad blood... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm skipping ahead here. First, he comes out, and he calls out his brother, Jimmy. When Jimmy comes out, Jay says, this feels different. Regardless of the bad blood, bad blood, though, he misses him. They don't ride together, don't see him anymore. And he basically says, here's your last shot to come back. But Jimmy claims, I never left... You're the one who, who left, and all that I was doing was just trying to protect you the entire time. Now, this line, of course, got people buzzing, because this line, all people are saying is incorrect. He says, it was Jay's idea to leave the bloodline, and he helped him because he's his brother. But, of course, well, what we saw last year, Jimmy was the first one to leave the bloodline, because... He was the one, the first person who um, fired the trigger and did the super kick on um, Roman Reigns, which costed them their tag match at Night of Champions last year. Unless, of course, if behind the scenes, we find out later on down the line that it was Jay's idea, they just had Jimmy be the one to pull the trigger first. But, of course, again, why would he rejoin the blood line after that, though? But anyways, he says... Uh, he helped him because he's his brother. And he talks about all Jay's success on Raw, include, including winning the tag titles without him. And he says, listen loud and clear. I'm the biggest moment in your career. And the biggest moments are because of me. Jay offers simply that the biggest moment in his career is going to be his dream match at WrestleMania 40. Just the two of them when he knocks the yeet out of his ass. And then he just just went pow! Like did a big ass sucker punch right into in Jimmy. But then of course Solo came down to distract him. And then Jimmy then overwhelmed Jay until Cody Rhodes made the save. And Cody hit a Cody Cutter on Solo. Man the Solo still feel, feel so weak now compared to what he used to be. But um... Yeah, that promo. Like I said, the line of it was Jay's idea to lead the bloodline was a line that just stood out. And again, like I said, it could either be have been just, you know, like a continuity error. Or it could have been the fact that maybe there is more to the story behind the scenes. But as I keep mentioning, I have really been disappointed with the build for this Jimmy and Jay match at WrestleMania. I mean, the match is still going to be great. But the build... It just still feels like it's in first gear for me. Like, it feels like it hasn't gotten to a whole other level. Like, is this going to be the first of a few matches they're going to have against each other? Because I think, I don't know. Like, I, 
as I said from back in the fall when this turn first happened, and I still think ever since this has happened, again, the bloodline has not, the bloodline, like, stable itself has just been flat. Like, like Solo is not, you know, as dangerous as he used to be. Ever since he was dubbed the tribal heir, he's barely done anything. He's lost most of his matches ever since he beat John Cena. Guess he got the Austin Theory Syndrome, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, um, and again, Jimmy has just been both like a chump. Like, I still think, and a lot of people think this, Jimmy only turned heel. Which, again, still doesn't make sense why he still would join the bloodline. And why Roman Reigns still even wants him in the bloodline. But I think the only reason they turn him heel was to have a reason to stall and continue the story with the bloodline. Because I still think, and this is me, they should have had Roman's reign end at SummerSlam. And again, Cody could have done it by winning Money in the Bank at Money in the Bank. But, and that's thing too, I, I still don't get. Why did Cody, like, stay out of a tight, the main event title scene this long like you know he had plenty of reasons to want to go after the championship but who knows like, like, like i said it just i mean again the match is gonna be good i am very excited for it. it's just the build just like it's disappointed me like, again it just feels like you know it's like yeah he turned and then a few months later yeah okay we'll fight that's fine like that's all it is it's like I want something more. I expected much more out of this build. And again, Jimmy is just a chump. Like, he he's basically the one that just is going to eat the pins for the bloodline. So, I was okay with that opening promo. But like, again, I, I watched it and I'm just like... Th they should have been on a whole other level, I think, with this by now. But, again, the match will still be good at WrestleMania. Uh, we have Paul Heyman, though, who's backstage getting confronted by Adam Pierce, And, um, Adam Pierce is on the phone with Nick Aldis to tell his roster to get in order. Because he didn't like that the bloodline crashed raw. And, um, and, um, Heyman says the bloodline weren't here on his recognition. And says they arrived ahead of him. And Roman is a man of his word. Jimmy and Solo are already gone. And he tells Adam Pierce to call his bluff and says he's here on official business. And once he's done, he'll leave. Which technically is what kind of happened. When he did say he was here on official business, I don't know why. But because I had heard some rumors recently, I thought at first maybe he was going to bring back Brock. But didn't happen. And I don't know if Brock ever will come back. But anyways, probably... Either my favorite or one of my favorite matches of the night. Because I'm not going to knock that main event. That main event was a really good match. Well, for a Raw level of this. I felt like if that main event was on pay-per-view, it would have been even better than it was. But um, this tag match with DIY, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus the Creed Brothers, Brutus and Julius, um, in a qualifying match to be in that ladder match at WrestleMania... Gosh, this match was freaking awesome. Again, we all already know that, again, and I still, I really do think think Johnny and Tommaso are both like, they feel like they're back on the level they were uh, as a tag team in NXT. Individually, I don't know. But as a tag team, it feels like that they've, they found their footing. Um, the Creed Brothers, though, Again, I still am getting to know who they are, but I have loved, I think, just about every single one of their matches. This one was probably my favorite, especially Julius. There is a moment, well, we, we, we had like a, a reversal into a stereo border city uh, stretches, and then uh, we had, of course, the um, double submissions from both teams as well. There was a spot in the match though where it looked like um like it was it was like Julius was trying to like multitask with both Johnny and Tommaso. It was kind of a weird thing to say, but
But it's kind of like he was going to do something to Tommaso, and then he just he just flipped over Johnny and slammed him down. And it, it, it was it's hard for me to explain. I can't. I don't remember how exactly to describe it. But it was like a big multitasking moment. I thought was really cool. I mean, again, yeah, Bruce is awesome. Julius, though, I really think they think it is is something is some type of special talent in the ring. And um, like I said, both these guys have really good chemistry. Someday they have to be involved. It, the tag titles got to be involved in these two one on one. Heck, I'll put it this way: here's a dream match: DIY versus the Creed brothers for the tag titles in a two out of three falls match. That would be a, a hell of a two out of three falls match. Anyways, though, DIY does win from a victory roll from Tommaso Ciampa on Julius. And they finally, two of the biggest pillars in the black and gold era of NXT, are finally going to have a match at WrestleMania. And it's for the tag titles in a ladder match. That is unreal. Everybody's talking about how six years ago, they may have been a, quite possibly the best NXT TakeOver event, NXT TakeOver New Orleans in 2018. And of course, that was the main event match. The first, uh, well, that was technically the second match that WWE had, had done with Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano 101. Because the other one was during the Cruiserweight Classic in 2016, which was freaking awesome of a match as well. That match... I still say, out of all their matches, my favorite is still the Chicago Street Fight. But I think that TakeOver New Orleans one was so special because it was the emotional side was very, you know, engraved in that match. It showed that, you know, Johnny still had that soft spot for Tommaso, but he had to fight that soft side in order to overcome him. And then, of course, later on, uh, when it, of course, got more personal for the Chicago Street Fight. And that's another thing. Um, another thing that made it special. But someday, that will be a pay-per-view match. The Creed Brothers and DIY. Oh, man. But, no, I, I'm sorry. I got off track there. But they headlined. They basically headlined WrestleMania weekend. They stole the show WrestleMania weekend that year. And now, finally, after all these years, again... The two people were basically brought in as extras for the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic are finally going to be in a headlining match at WrestleMania for the tag titles. I think that is, it's about time that happened. So we got that. Then we have Judgment Day chatting with Andrade because Dominic's there this week. He's the one who's kind of like putting in a good word for Andrade. Uh, they mentioned how Judgment Day is exclusive and that they'll make things happen if he keeps trying to be impressive. Finn Balor and his bucket hat say he'll be watching Andrade's matches. And Andrade says he'll keep them bef- he'll see them before he runs into Damian Priest. They exchange greetings and they move on. Don't know where this is going still, but we will again just have to um wait and see of course. Um what exactly that is again we'll see. Um, anyways, sorry, I'll just peek at something real quick. Um, we also get announced that Thunderbolt Patterson, not so familiar with him, but he also joined the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2024. Wondering how many more there is going to be. They didn't announce any new ones on SmackDown. Um, I know last year they kept it kind of small, but I am starting to wonder, and I will mention this real quick too, but they did announce this week that and there will be a review on at some point i might try to do a wrestlemania week since i'll probably take a break for raw and smackdown reviews that week but they are going to have a documentary released on peacock on april 1st this is no april fool's joke of bray about bray wyatt's life so i am wondering again his father's being inducted with the u for through the u.s express i still think it's a it's fitting the first year after his death to get him in the Hall of Fame. And I just keep thinking about like whenever I keep thinking about okay, when Undertaker released that five part last ride series that he did, at the end he basically implied he is retired now. 
what if they use this documentary to announce that Bray Wyatt will be inducted into the Hall of Fame? Which I think is a great idea. But, again, I think that WWE just has to make it happen. So, so yeah, I... Um, I am definitely intrigued by the documentary again. There will be a review on it. Best that, believe it. Um, and I still think they that Bray Wyatt should be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Heck, I'll, they haven't announced a Warrior Award winner. I'll even take Bray Wyatt being inducted into the Hall of Fame by being the winner of the Warrior Award. That Because they haven't announced that yet. I am starting to wonder if that is what they're going to do. But we'll have to wait and see. If Bray Wyatt, in fact, gets in the Hall of Fame this year. Um, but anyways, we then have round two of Candice LeRae. Just, oh man, I, I I am digging. I love the direction they're finally giving for Candice. It's simple, but it works so good. So they, her and Indy have a match against Katana Chance and Caden Carter. During the match, Katana Chance lands awkwardly on her knee and they back off Candace and Indy. Well, Candace goes, oh, I don't care. She tags in Indy and says, okay, let's just, you know, at least finish this match, you know. She tags herself in and she puts, she puts Kaden, I'm sorry, Katana, I still want to call her Casey. Well, I, her tag partner is Kaden, I took it. Anyways, she puts Katana Chance in a half crab to get Katana to tap out. She's a manipulator. Like, like she basically is just taking any advantage she can. And again, she, you know, got to Maxine, you know, in, the, in her head last week. This week she took advantage of Katana Chance's pain. What else is the poison pixie up her sleep? But I am enjoying it. And I'm liking how right now it's kind of like, you know, she's taking charge of Indy. I think that is kind of a good role to give Indy Hartwell kind of like, kind of give her a rub in some ways, but also really have Candace stand out. But I'm loving the, what they're doing so far with her as a heel. So we have that. And I'm pretty sure they'll probably get a tag title shot sometime soon. All right. Let me do something really quick here. Let's put on, you know how you say, let's put on our thinking cap? Well, let's put on... Our Cody cap. By far, again, we, we, we had that tag match with DIY and the, the Creed Brothers that I loved. We had the main event. And, of course, in the middle, we have this Cody Rhodes promo. Cody going from very emotional, crying last week. The Rock burying Cody on the microphone from crying last week. To this. This is how Cody responds. And I was just like, chef's kiss. It was awesome. So Cody comes out. He says he'll be main eventing WrestleMania in less than three weeks yet again. Challenging for the Universal Championship. Against the greatest champion in all sports. The Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. He'll have a little conversation with Roman this Friday. But there are of course complications. And combustible elements named The Rock. He rattles off a list of heels. As he, as, and this is where you know you know the, the promo is going to go a different direction. You're like wait a minute where is this going because. It feels like you're break, he was breaking the fourth wall. He claims The Rock says he's the best heel. Well, there have been other superstars that have been a great heel. So from superstar Billy Graham to nature boy Ric Flair. Rock, though, he doesn't think The Rock is a heel. He just thinks The Rock's an asshole. And he don't want to get upset or emotional because he knows how he feels about emotion and he gets it. There's no crying and wrestling. But Dwayne, what Dwayne, or as Pug says, your buddy Dwayne, hasn't Dwayne 
been crying behind the scenes the entire time. He went and cried to his TKO buddies about how he needed to save WWE. Cody says, Rock is the only guy he stood across from who is a Mount Rushmore wrestler. But he's also a terrible salesman, a carny scumbag, bus, and a whiny bitch. And Rock wants to talk about his mom? Well, Rock, let's talk about your mom. And I'm like, uh-oh. She's a lovely lady who once helped him chop Kevin Owens in a dark match. Class act. Rock thinks his mom thinks his mom would tremble and cower in front of Dwayne. His mom ain't scared of nothing. She beat up an undercover cop at a Willie Nelson concert. He comes back around to WrestleMania and admits he doesn't know if there'll be a fair fight or if he'll finish the story. This is of course the part was everyone's favorite part. But Dwayne, Dwayne, how can you be so sure of your own self? You haven't been in the ring in years. Real time action. You're talking, talking, talking. But what's going to happen when the bell rings? Will he bring the great one? Will it be... Big Dwayne energy? Or will it be LDS? And by LDS, Little Dick Syndrome. Which basically saying The Rock has a small one. And I was, and we're all, and that probably got the biggest pop of the night. Like Cody, Cody hit Rock low there. Like, of course, I don't think The Rock has responded yet, but he will, I believe, either next... I know he's going to be on Raw sometime soon. Um, I don't... I know um, he is also... Um, uh, what was it called? Uh, he's going to be on Raw soon. I don't know if he's going to be on SmackDown again before WrestleMania. I know he was advertised for Raw, but... Rock's going to have quite a response to his, to the LDS comment there. He says The Rock has called himself the final boss. And maybe he literally is. But at WrestleMania, he's just going to be Roman's side chick. Trying to get in the head again. Which is going to probably set up the match for WrestleMania 41 with Rock and Roman. Where is Rock really the final boss? Are Rock and Roman really a duo? Or is it finally going to get in the head that The Rock doesn't doesn't like that Roman Reigns being recognized as more powerful than him? Oh. Like I said, I still think... And I'll kind of address this a little bit. based Because obviously the, the promos involving Cody taking shots at The Rock are even more, are more interesting than the, 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 the beef between Roman and Cody. Like at this point... There's nothing new to establish between Roman and Cody. It's basically their surroundings. The obstacles around them. And again, it's basically the same thing in Harry Potter as I keep comparing this to. Roman Reigns is Voldemort. And all the pieces of the bloodline. All the stuff that is protecting the hell out of his historic title reign are his Horcruxes. And Cody can take them all the way at WrestleMania by having the bloodline barred for winning the tag match. Or it's going to be go time with a bloodline rules match. I'm not going to lie. I am still hoping it's bloodline rules. Because I think that would be crazier. But again, the story again calls... With Cody saying he's going to take everything away from Roman. And him taking away the bloodline. Taking away his family. I think is the route to go. But anyways. This is where Paul Heyman comes out. He says the ideals he and Cody share. Are much greater than the gap between them. And he's going to offer an apology. He came out a few weeks ago. With some friends from the New York Police Department. He apologized. Saying for a wise man. That was kind of stupid of him. 
It didn't work, and it was just plain dumb. And for that, he apologizes to Cody and to the entire audience. Cody goes, well, he didn't say this, but it's like, Mr. Heyman! I didn't ask for an apology. He doesn't need permission to step in the ring. Paul says he has a message from the tribal chief. Cody can think, thank him. I can think of him however he likes, but Roman's a tribal chief of his word. Roman will go face to face with Cody on SmackDown this Friday. It will just be him, no one else. And he asks Cody to do the same in return. Cody says, Deal. And they shake on it. And Heyman, and then Rose steps up to Heyman afterwards and says, It's a deal, and shakes his hand. Basically telling Paul, you know, keep your end or else. Nia Jax the promo about how she's going to beat Becky and she's going to hurt her so bad she won't be able to go to WrestleMania and she'll be the one to go instead. Um, we also had a backstage with Cody running to Jay Uso and Jay goes, yo, I'll go to SmackDown with you and be in your corner. But Cody says, I'm doing it alone. And Jay says, you know the bloodline's going to, you know, not stay at their word. But if you need him, he's got him. Uh, Ricochet has a match with Dominic because Rhea was not happy that um, that JD lost to Dominic in the Gauntlet match last week. I'm sorry, JD lost to Ricochet, but then Dominic lost to Ricochet. It was still a good match, though. It felt it felt like they took the cuffs a little bit off of Ricochet in this match. He felt like he was like you know just going all over the place again with his fantastic maneuver moves. Which you gotta keep letting him do, of course. Uh, Ricochet wins. Sami Zayn is then backstage getting ready to go for his contract sign for his Intercontinental title match with Gunther. Until he walks into the man everybody thinks should have won last week, Chad Gable. Chad is upset and Sami um, says until Chad tells him the WrestleMania title shot meant more to him. Sami's like, that's a little unfair. He's Because Chad's not the only one that this matters to. And he's not the only one. Whose children cry when he loses. Chad raises his voice again. And says it's not about any of that. It's just that he doesn't think that Sammy can beat Gunther. Then Sammy goes out to the ring. Obviously he's upset by these comments. And. Um, Gunther talks about. What an import- what How important this match is. And tells Sammy he's dressed. Like a bum. Sammy fires back and talks about how everybody is is surprised in his career and says he's going to make history by ending his reign, the longest ISIS title reign of all time, and he signs a contract. But then Gunther tells Sammy, you should listen to Chad Gable because he doesn't think Sammy can beat him either. The crowd loves that. The crowd, um, sorry, the crowd loves Sammy, but they don't think Sammy can beat him either. And he's being honest with himself. He doesn't think Sammy believes it either. So he's standing on his doorstep and banging Gunther for the beating of a lifetime. So whatever he needs to do, keep doing it. At WrestleMania, his dreams will meet reality. Gunther signs a contract, but then Sammy cuts him off and tells him to look deep into his eyes. Into the eyes of a man who's going to take him down at WrestleMania. And then Sammy just storms out and the camera follows him. You thought something was going to happen because he, he went, it followed him up the ramp, uh, through, through Gorilla, into the hallways. Of course, just to pass Awesome Truth, uh, which Miz uh, was trying to get um, our truth to realize they're going to be the ones taken on in the sheer. The guys just walk right past them. Uh, but Sammy was having none of it. Because later on in the night, uh, Sammy confronted Chad Gable. was like, why do you think I can't beat Gunther? And Gable says, Sammy's built his whole career around being the underdog and waiting for an opportunity. But that won't happen with Gunther. And if he doesn't change his mentality, he can't beat him. So he thinks that your underdog mentality is is not going to be enough against the ring general. Now, here's the thing. Again, I am someone who does, again, think Chad Gable should have won the match. And he should be going and having a singles WrestleMania moment. As he most definitely deserves so to do. Um, 
But my thing though is is, and this is why I think I think Sammy is not going to be the one to dethrone Gunther, and that is because again, this was not the original plan. The original plan was for Gunther to fight Brock Lesnar with the Intercontinental title on the line. And I'm pretty sure they weren't going to put the IC title on Brock. I'm sorry. Brock ending Gunther's reign would have been stupid. So I think either way, the plan was to keep the title on Gunther for a little while longer. So I think Sammy going to WrestleMania to, you know, take a close loss. Will kind of be something that does help further down the line for Sammy. But again, I still don't think he's going to be the one to dethrone Gunther. Eventually, though, it's got to be Chad. And I love that they are keeping Chad involved in this because people want to see him. So this is kind of like keeping the juice on Chad. So that way, when he does come his time, then there will be something there already. So I did enjoy that. Uh, awesome Truth then beat, beat, beat in the sheer. I don't give a crap about in the sheer, but they win because um, Miss um, um, Truth just randomly fell on top of Veer Mahan. It was weird, but Awesome Truth are in the, are in the, the, the latter match. I still think they're going to be the ones to, de- to to win the tag titles in this match. I would love it to be DIY, but again. The story is just right there for our truth. So, we'll of course see what happens. Uh, we did have a vignette saying CM Punk will be on Raw next week in Chicago, his hometown. And he also mentions how, what are the first four words in Philadelphia? Phil. And he says he will be at WrestleMania. Maybe he'll make him the WrestleMania host. They haven't announced the host. Maybe they'll, they'll give him that job since he can't wrestle because of his um, torn tricep, which sucks still. But speaking of which, Drew McIntyre then came out and with Seth Rollins. Drew leads the corner and Seth welcomes us to Monday Night Rollins. He emphasized the S for once. So when they might confuse is it Monday Night Rollins or Monday Night Rollins? McIntyre tells him, get it out of the system, because after WrestleMania, the spot will be all, all will be all his. And then Rollins says he came out here to admit that Drew was absolutely correct about one thing. The first step to recovery is the hardest. And he puts his hands up and he basically pretends he is like in like an AA meeting or something. And he admits he's a spotlight junkie. Drew asks if everything is a joke to him and says he's become a parody of himself, but he don't care about this BS anymore. And basically, it's the same thing, you know, uh, he only cares about their ma- match at WrestleMania, where Seth, of course, you know, um, has had the spotlight on him, and with the bloodline, blah, 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 he knows Drew's trying to entertain people on the internet, but one of the WrestleMania, night, night one WrestleMania, he takes on the biggest star in Hollywood, and his side chick, and he makes them his bitches. Night two, the spotlight will be on the World Heavyweight title, he's also going to win. Drew says he wants that passion and wants him to, to he had and he had had him finish. They both done this for twenty years, and he tells Rollins his priorities are backwards. Basically, the same thing we have been given all along. Not saying this promo like kind of killed my interest for the, for the match. It didn't, but again, it's just kind of the same thing there in, in my opinion. But again, it was fine. Um... Now, this I didn't like. New Day beat Alpha Academy to get into that ladder match. I have nothing against the New Day. But they just lost a blow-off match to Imperium. Why wasn't this Imperium getting the, getting the shot to be in the match? Because, remember, they just randomly had Imperium lose. I mean, Imperium beat New Day in the blow-off match in that awesome street fight. Then they just had a random match against Judgment Day and lost. And we haven't seen Kaiser and Vinci since. They should have been in this ladder match. Not the New Day. They didn't get a shot, but New Day get the win. Whatever. 
Uh, Becky Lynch was uh, getting ready for her main event. And um, Liv Morgan approached her, wished her luck, and bid her punch uh, her punch Nia in the face. Um, Cody Rhodes is walking uh, his dog Pharaoh backstage when he runs into Seth. And Cody's and, and uh, ask one on one, and Cody says one on one, referring to you know the deal for Friday and the plan, pretty much. Main event was Becky Lynch and Nia Jax, last woman staying. I thought this match was great. I feel like it would have been on pay per view, would have been even better. But again, um, again, Nia Jax has definitely improved in the ring a lot. I'm still not the biggest fan of her, but I can at least watch her put on a tolerable match. And I do think Becky Lynch is bringing out the best in her, I think, with with this feud. She was a legitimate obstacle for Becky Lynch as they had unfinished business from five years ago. The only thing that was kind of weak was when Nia was hitting Becky with the chair. It looked like she was, like, holding back, but it's just, like, whipper. Look like a monster and whatnot. Don't half-ass it. But, um, the highlights were definitely the last two spots where Becky was getting some momentum after Nia dominated a good chunk of the match. She had a sick-looking manhandle slam, um, through, off the apron, through the table. And then there was a ladder set up. And Becky finished off Nia where she couldn't stand up by hitting by Nia was all loopy around the announce table. Becky jumped off the ladder and did a leg drop on the back of Nia's neck through the announce table. And that is what led to Becky finally vanquishing Nia Jax and getting her out of her way for WrestleMania. Afterwards, Rhea came out, confronted Becky. Again, the same thing of, you know, just talking trash her, how she's, you know, working while Nia is just playing it safe, 100% and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. And that's how the show ends. So, again, I didn't like the, the, the fact that, um, that, that New Day is getting a shot at the tag titles, but Imperium's not. Um, a couple of Nick picks in there, but the show is mostly really good. Again, main event was awesome. It would have been better if it was on pay-per-view. I know they would have done more. And then, um, again, the Cody Rhodes promo. I love the tag match get with DIY and the Creed Brothers. Uh, so, again, I thought it was a great episode of Raw. I gave it a B plus, A B-plus for Raw. Um, again, we have one more Raw review left before WrestleMania. Again, the week of WrestleMania, I will probably take a break from Raw reviews to focus on the uh, preview and predictions stream for sure, which will hopefully have new graphics there. Again, that is my biggest priority. My three big priorities right now is to keep the Raw and SmackDown reviews up to date, um, finish Crumbly Woods, and to also, the third thing is to um, make sure the new channel graphics are ready for WrestleMania. So guys... That's my review. Hope I, I'm going to attempt to do a um, uh, my SmackDown review next. I have to take this a few minute breather. But again, a B plus for Raw this week. Try again next week to go live. But again, can't guarantee again. I just have a lot going on right now trying to get my the paperwork for my fence figured out. And uh, we will go from there. So guys, once again, what are your thoughts on this week's episode of Raw? I gave the B plus. What do you guys think? You guys thoughts down in the comment section below. And also be sure as always to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content to come to my channel. And follow me on Twitter as well at the Club of the Man 93. You may also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at the Club of the Man 1993. And until then, guys, I'm checking out. I'll catch you guys all later. Have a great rest of your night. And do not forget, in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. And for I am the man himself. And that is not just an opinion, my friends. That is a fact of life. Yeah.